Hello everyone, hope you're doing okay. Our lesson today is in uh, Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. And the title of the lesson is Neighbors. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this time to come together, the time, this time to study your word. Lord, forgive me where I fail you. And Lord, I just ask that you would help me teach it in a way that's easily understood. And Lord, I just pray for those in our community who are sick, those who have lost loved ones. And Lord, we just pray, uh, Lord, for our church as a whole. We pray for our pastor and his family, for our deacons and for our uh, congregation lord as a whole and we pray that you will be with us and lead us and guide us help us lord to serve you in a way that you will be pleased with and lord we just ask for uh, those that have lost loved ones lord to comfort them for those that are sick lord that need your healing touch we pray that your uh, touch will be upon them according to your will and lord we just uh, ask that you um, continue to help us as a nation and uh, help us to heal and help us to do the things we need to do, Lord, to get for this virus to go away. And, and I know, Lord, you'll take it when it's time. And, Lord, I just pray that uh, we can learn from it and, Lord, uh, grow from it. And, Lord, just uh, learn to be closer to you and walk closer to you. I ask all this in Jesus' name. And thank you most of all for Jesus. Amen. Our lesson is about... Um, it's really the Good Samaritan story, which we're all real familiar with. And uh, I'll begin by reading verse 25. And it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Of course, he's addressing Jesus. And the lawyer coming uh, forth to ask a question uh, was in itself not a bad thing, but Scripture says he tempted Jesus. So that means his intent was to trip Jesus up or try to catch him in something that he could uh, use to accuse him. And uh, it was a means of trying to subtly trap Jesus into saying something wrong. And uh, the man's intent here, of course, was not good. And uh, it was not to ask a sincere question because he was uh, interested or uh, wanting to know more about Jesus and about uh, what Jesus thought about things. Uh, it was to try to malign uh, Jesus's character. He also used an important word here uh, that we're going to talk about a little bit, and that word was inherit. And, uh, you know, when you inherit something, that's a term that we... Uh, talk about like when someone passes away and they leave leave something to someone then uh they say it's an inheritance and uh, it could be something small it could be something big but they leave it to someone and uh so uh it could be something big you know money or property or jewelry or even a business but it also could be small things but it's an inheritance something that someone's left for you to uh, have or to enjoy. Uh, but something that we cannot inherit is eternal life. We cannot be saved and pass that on to someone else. Uh, our salvation is a very personal uh, personal thing. It's a personal decision uh, between us and the Lord. Uh, our salvation is what takes us to heaven. Um and we don't leave it behind when we go. Uh, we take it with us. And uh, uh, someone else, you know, when we have earthly possessions, when we die, we don't take anything with us. We don't take anything as far as we can't take our money, our cars, our houses, uh, our furniture, anything else, you know. Our physical body stays here, but our spiritual body goes on. And uh, let's look in verses 26 and 28. I'm not going to... Um, read all that, but um, he, per Jesus kind of just turns to the lawyer and uh, he a answers him with a question. And Jesus does that sometimes. You ask him a question, he'll ask you a question back. And uh, so that's what he does. He said, what does the law say? Now, this uh, person was, should have been learned, you know, of course, in Jewish law. And uh, so, of course, asking him something like that would um, 
be common because he should already know that law, know the law. And uh, of course, we know that uh, the man answered according to the scriptures. He said, love the Lord uh, your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And the man uh, answered Jesus correctly, and Jesus said, you have answered correctly. And he affirmed that. And uh, because he couldn't trip Jesus up on that part, uh, he was kind of seeking a loophole or seeking another avenue to go in uh, when he said, uh, who is my neighbor? You know, who, who do you think my neighbor is? And uh, so Jesus tells a story, a parable. And Jesus did this often. He would use parables to teach uh, us and to teach others uh, about the point that he was trying to make. And, uh, of course, we know this story as the Good Samaritan story. Uh, a man was on a trip from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho, and the man was uh, set upon by thieves. He was beaten and pro most likely robbed and uh, left for dead. And uh, they even uh, took his clothes. So he w there he was, you know, lying by the side of the road or in the road, uh, naked and half beaten to death. And as a result of this attack, well, the first person that comes by is the priest. And uh, the priest came, you know, and he looked and he saw the man and he kind of just eased to the other side and kept on moving along. And uh, he didn't uh, he didn't stop to help. He avoided the situation. Uh, then came the Levite. And the Levite assisted in duties uh, in the temple, uh, in the maintenance of the temple. He also passed by on the other side. And so both the priests and the Levites uh, would have been respected people in the Jewish community. People they would have looked up to, people they would have respected. And uh, uh, so remember, this lawyer is also uh, a Jew. And uh, so... Uh, both of these groups would have been very significant, very um, uh, in the in the commu Jewish community, but also it would have been very ingrained in them about keeping themselves ceremonially clean, and uh, you know to touch certain people or the cert or certain things made them un they believed made them unclean, and uh, they couldn't have performed the necessary duties in uh, the temple. And you know, it's so ironic because they're more worried about the temple and doing what they need to do there than, than helping a person who's in need. And uh, we can get caught up in those things in our church sometimes, being more concerned about the church and, and the physical things of the church uh, rather than the, the spiritual needs of people around us. And, and I think we have to be very... Um, conscious of that and uh, take that always into consideration. You know, what's the most important thing? And uh, let's look at verses 33 uh, through 35. And I'm going to read those. I better put my glasses on for this one. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Um... Uh, here comes the Samaritan, and he uh, walks up on the, the, the man just like the other two people had. And uh, Samaria, or the Samaritans, lived uh, between Galilee, which was to the north, and Judea, which was to the south. Uh, they Samaritans were descendants of the Jewish people who had intermarried with uh, pagan believers. And because of that, uh, they were considered, uh, this happened during the Babylonian exile. And uh, because of this, they were considered unclean. They were considered outcasts. They were considered somebody that uh, you didn't talk to, you didn't speak to, you didn't look at. And uh, they were uh, definitely looked down upon by the Jews. And uh, the Samaritan, of course, when he came along, he drew closer to the man and uh, he showed concern. Uh, 
to see the contrast there in those who traveled by who were, you know, re religious workers and religious leaders. And uh, this man who was uh, considered most likely an enemy of the Jew. Uh, but, you know, this, this Samaritan would have been in the lowest of the low in, in, G, in the Jews' way of thinking. So here he is. He stopped. He drew closer. He touched the man. He bound up his wounds. He uh, did whatever he could to minister to him. He put him on his own beast, uh, most likely a donkey or camel, I, I would suppose, and uh, brought him to somewhere safe. He brought him to an inn, and he personally took care of him. And then when he left on the next day, he left money for the care for the uh, innkeeper to continue to take care of him until he came back and said, if you use more money than what I've left, I'll pay you when I come back. And uh, so now in this story, Jesus was speaking to the lawyer who was a Jew. And the story assumes that the Jew was a victim. You know, he's talking to a Jew, talk, telling the story of a Jew. And uh, so, like I said, this Jew would not have spoken to a Samaritan, let alone stop to help uh, one lying along the side of the road. Uh, the Jews despised the Samaritans. And just because they were Samaritans, there was no other reason. You know, it wasn't because they knew them and didn't like them. They just didn't like them because of who they were. And uh, we have to be so careful about uh, being judgmental as people. Uh, I have been judgmental of people before and been ashamed, been ashamed uh, that I was. And I've had to ask the Lord to forgive me for it. Judging people by how they look or, or what I assume about them. And uh, that's nothing but wrong. It's nothing but wrong. And I am guilty of it, and I have done it, and I've asked the Lord to forgive me for it. Uh, you cannot judge uh, a book by the cover, as they say. You have to get to know somebody. And uh, uh, get they're, they're very interesting people out there that sometimes we uh, shy away from. And, uh, and uh, so I think we have to be... Uh, be very careful. We don't like to be judged. You know, we don't like people judging us. And we don't want to do that to other people either. Uh, knowing about their culture and the fact that the Samaritans' uh, compassion was so great for this, for someone he didn't even know, who was obviously probably a Jew. and uh, But he took compassion on him. He didn't hate him for who he was. He just knew he was a man that needed help. And he did that. So let's read verses 36 and 37. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Uh, three people in the story came upon the victim. And... Uh, had an opportunity to help the man. Only one expressed compassion on him. Uh, then Jesus asked the lawyer, you know, who do you think his, the, the neighbor was? And the lawyer had no choice but to say, the one that showed him mercy. And uh, so Jesus genu genuinely, he wasn't trying to trip the lawyer up. He genu genuinely wanted the lawyer to hear the truth, know the truth, see the truth. He was concerned about the lawyer's heart as well as, as trying to show him the right thing. So he genuinely cared about this lawyer. He wasn't trying to play a game with him and outfox him, you know, and uh, he wanted him to see what was really important uh, in this scenario. Loving others and not you know, not being a good neighbor or being a good neighbor has to do with how we treat others, not just people who physically live next door to us, who are who we consider our neighbors, but it's people we come in contact with through our lives, uh, people who are have different beliefs than we do, different cultures, different ethnic backgrounds. Uh, they're all around us, and but everyone is our neighbor. And uh, Jesus expects his followers to treat people the way we would want to be treated. 
And uh, our faith in Jesus brings us, uh, you know, it brings us to a point in our lives where we have to uh, question our own selves, our own motives, our own beliefs, and uh, try to think more like him and less like us, you know. And uh, it's, the, it, it's the way that we can see evidence that we're serving him if we have a heart that wants to be like him and that wants to be better and uh, we are we are so uh, we uh, we're so messed up sometimes and uh, we don't always see the truth of things and uh, we do have to consider um how we treat others and how how we want to be treated especially our enemies uh it's a challenge for us. You know, we have to be careful uh, if you, uh, you don't want to mix it up with people that uh, might do you harm. I, I'm not trying to say that, but I am saying, you know, if you're in a situation to treat somebody well and kind, then, uh, you know, it's the thing to do. Uh, the Samaritan gave help to someone society uh, considered to be his enemy and uh, not his neighbor. Uh, we have a tendency, I think, to shy away from people who don't look like us, act like us, and think like us, you know. And uh, we uh, we go to church with people who believe like we believe because that's comfortable to us. And uh, it is what we believe, and we want to continue to uh, increase our faith and, and uh, practice what, uh, what we preach, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but we can have respect for other people's beliefs, you know, I, uh, and and what they um, what they believe. Uh, I think as long as someone is in a Christian faith, then uh, they're on the right track. They don't have to do everything like I do and and uh, think everything like I think. As but you know, non Christian faith, I, I think, is something else. You know, we need to shy away from cults and and people who would take us on a wrong journey. Uh, about our faith, and we have to be cautious about that. Um, we have to weigh our decisions. You know, the enemy in the story today was helpless and in need of mercy. He was no threat to anyone. He was laying there dying. You know, he just needed somebody to, to have mercy upon him. And showing mercy, showing kindness, and compassion are all Christ-like qualities. Where would we be without them? Where would we be if Jesus hadn't had mercy and compassion on us? And uh, uh, where would we be today? And uh, so we always, always, you know, want to be like Christ. We want to choose wisely uh, and and then follow through, you know, as far as following him and, and of course, how we, we treat other people and how we treat each other. Not just people outside of our homes, but we need to be, be uh, kind and loving to the people that are most important to us uh, in our homes and uh, our our, our real our family you know we want to we want to treat each other with kindness as well and uh, I think that's always important uh, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson today I hope you've got something out of it and uh, until next time much love